Good morning, all you cool cats and kittens. Today I'm going to be teaching you all about resistance. To start off with, then you're going to find some questions right here. I'd like to have a go at these five questions. I'd like to make sure that you write your answers down on some paper, and I'll go through the answers in a few minutes' time. You have five minutes to have a go at them, spend a minute on each question, and we'll move on to the rest of the lesson. In a the questions are number one, to draw the circuit symbol for a cell, and that should look something like this. Uh, they're to draw the circuit symbol for a bulb, and the circuit symbol for a bulb should look something like this. Uh, and the circuit symbol for an ammeter should look something like this. Current is really simple to define. Uh, current is just the flow of charge around a circuit or through a conductor. Um, that can look one of a number of ways. It can um, be that the current is flowing as electrons through a wire, or it can be charged particles, ions, moving around inside something as well. Either of those two things are classed as a current. Now, potential difference. Um, the correct definition for this is the difference in energy, but if you do have any questions about that, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to answer those questions. Okay, your objectives for today's lesson then. There are four of them. The first one is we're going to record what resistance is. We're going to define it. We're going to say what it's measured in. We're going to describe how to measure it. We're going to talk about the circuits that you use uh, and the things we might measure with those circuits. We're going to talk about how you would calculate resistance and rearrange uh, the question rearrange the equation to calculate the answer, and we'll explain how a model is similar to a circuit as way as well. We're going to look at a specific model, we're going to talk about the ways that it's similar to a circuit and the ways that it's different from a circuit. Okay. Also at the top of the objective slide, you should be able to see the big question for this week. Uh, and that question is, do things with high resistance or low resistance give people static shock? Okay, so next slide then. Is here. You have got five questions again. You've got five minutes to have a go at those questions. Uh, I'd like you to spend some time doing that for me, please. Uh, make sure you write your answers down because I want you to take a picture of this or send it to me on a Word document. Um, when you've finished, off you go. I'll pause. You should pause the video for a few minutes um, just so that you've got some time to write it down. Otherwise, so just pause the video. I'll wait a few seconds so you've got a chance to do that. Great. So there are five questions here. Then the first one is resistance. And resistance is just how difficult it is for that flow of charge, that current, to travel through a wire. Uh, it does have effects on the wire. We'll talk about that a bit later on. Uh, the unit resistance is measured in is called the ohm. And the symbol for that um, is the symbol omega from the Greek alphabet. It looks just like this. Uh, you'll have come across that before at some point, I imagine. The equation for calculating resistance um, is that we have voltage or potential difference equals current times resistance and we can rearrange that equation to calculate things that we need to but resistance is the voltage divided by the current so we'll talk about how to rearrange that in a few minutes time. Uh, I'd also like to give an example of something that shows a lot of resistance so you're looking to name some kind of insulates here so wood's a good example with lots of resistance because electricity doesn't travel through it very well. Uh, one other good example of something with high resistance would also be a brick or something like that. Um, you should try and have a think about that model extension question I put on the PowerPoint as well, because that is also quite important. If we were looking to find out how a circuit um, is affected by changing various things, how changing the resistance can affect the circuit, or how changing things in the circuit can affect the resistance, we need to set up a circuit to specifically do that. The circuit that we use would look something like this. This one's for specifically if we were looking to uh, find out how changing the length of a wire affects the resistance in a circuit. You can see that it contains a battery at the top to provide obviously the energy that it needs and to provide the current that it needs. You can see that it contains a bulb. The bulb's just there so we can see if the circuit works or not. It contains an ammeter in series with these things. So it's in the same circuit as them to measure the current within that circuit. Um, because obviously we need the current to measure, calculate the resistance. Uh, and it also contains a voltmeter. That voltmeter is in parallel either side of the length of wire we're going to be using. I'll talk about that in a second. It has to be connected before and after that length of wire to measure how much energy was used in that wire. Uh, this is what the voltage uh, has to do. And if you don't connect to either side, your results will not be worthwhile. The length of wire is there so we can measure the current and voltage for a specific length. We can then change the length of the wire, remeasure those things and see how the resistance has changed and keep doing so until eventually we'll be able to see 
how making the long wire longer has affected the resistance, which we'll be able to calculate as well. We can also use this circuit in a similar way to work out how the thickness of a wire affects the resistance. Instead of having that length of wire, we'd change that wire out for a thick, slightly thicker wire, measure the current and voltage again, and then put those things in again once more uh, and measure the resistance uh, one more time again, measuring that current and that voltage each time. So that's the circuit you'd need to use. If you watch the video I've got here for you, uh, that video is going to show you all the different things about how changing the length of one of the wires in that circuit we've just talked about can affect the resistance in a circuit. It's also going to talk about or show you how the changing the area of a wire can affect the resistance in a circuit as well. So as you can see, there's this equation with resistance being shown as the R, and as that side changes, as I change these two things, that size is going to show um, by me changing it to the length. As I increase the length, you can see the resistance gets bigger as well. And if I decrease the length, the resistance gets smaller. Uh, that resistance, one, the resistive, resistivity, you don't need to worry about. The area, if I increase that, you can see the resistance getting smaller. And the, if I decrease the area, the resistance gets bigger. So to, next, you need to be able to know how to calculate these things. Now, in the slide I've placed here, there are three questions for you to have a go at and doing this. I'd like you to pause the video here and have a go at answering those three questions. I've written the equation for you at the top of the slide, and I've also included in there the triangle to help you rearrange that equation if you don't know how to rearrange it properly. Remember, if you cover up the thing that you know, um, it will, or you want to know, sorry, you should then be left with the two things you do know and voltage at the top will be divided by whatever's underneath it and the two things at the bottom will be multiplied together if that's what you're left with. You should be using that equation to calculate those answers. So the answer to those questions that I've done for you, you can find here, I'm just going to play this video. You're going to need to watch and pay attention to what I write down and tick off as you go along what I do. Just pay attention. Okay, so we've got three questions to go through here. The first of these questions is very simple. Actually, you need to calculate the voltage in a circuit when the current is 5 amps and the resistance is 10 ohms. We can see it appear in the triangle, but to calculate the voltage, we need to take the current and multiply it by the resistance. So we're going to first of all write out that formula. Voltage equals current times resistance. We're then going to put those numbers into that formula. So our current is 5 amps. Our resistance is 10 ohms. That symbol there is for ohms. And that means we're going to do 5 times 10, which should give us 50 volts as our answer. So 50 volts is our answer. And we then need to make sure we've put units everywhere. Just to recap, that's formula, number, answer, unit. So we put our formula in, we put those numbers into that formula, we've given an answer to that, and every number has a unit to go with it. So that's the first one. Done. Question two, we're calculating the current when a circuit has a voltage of 5 volts and a resistance of 8 ohms. So this time, we're calculating the current, not the voltage, we want I. That means we're going to do the voltage divided by resistance. So, current is voltage divided by resistance. We're then going to put our numbers into that calculation. So we're going to do our voltage, 5 volts, divided by our resistance, which is 8 ohms, so we're going to do 5 divided by 8, which should give us an answer of 0 0.625 amps. We're going to double check we've given all, all our numbers units, so volts, ohms, amps, so it's good. We're then going to go on to the final one, which was to calculate the resistance when a circuit has a current of 5 milliamps and a potential difference of 10 volts. Again, we're going to go back up here. We'll calculate the resistance this time. We're going to do the voltage divided by the current. So resistance equals voltage over current. We're going to put our numbers into that next. So we're going to do our voltage of 10 volts divided by our current of 5 milliamps. So 5 milliamps is five thousandth of an amp of an amp so if we take that five and divide it by a thousand we're going to get the number we need to put here so five divided by a thousand naught point naught naught five we're then going to do ten divided by point naught naught five and this gives us an answer of two thousand amps sorry two thousand ohms have all our numbers got units? Yes, they do. 
This is all our answers then. Remember, we're making sure we do those four things as that's what your mark could be for in your exams. So you need to make sure you're doing those. Great. Okay, great. So next thing we will look at is gonna look at how we can model a circuit. So we can use another type of thing to explain it with something similar to it. So this is a central heating system, okay? This is similar in several ways to the circuit. It shows some things very well. It shows others not particularly brilliantly. I'd like you to pause the video and have a go explaining what the similarities are between these things. Um, and the parts of a circuit. Can you match anything to a circuit by the way they look, by the things they do? Um, you should know that radiators give off heat. That's like something in a circuit. You should know that a boiler and a pump is going to heat up the water and push it around the, around, the, around the central heating system. I'd like you to spend, pause the video here and spend a few minutes just writing down any similarities you can see between this and anything this might not show particularly brilliantly. And then I'll go through the answers to that as well. Pause it here. Great, so we have got several parts of this then that are similar to a circuit. First of all, our boiler and pump are very much like our cell or battery uh, because our boiler is going to give energy to the water and the pump's going to push that water around just like our battery is going to give energy to uh, the charge and it's going to push that charge around the circuit as well. We're also going to have our radiator, which is very similar to a bulb because obviously our bulb gives out light energy and our radiator gives out heat energy. They're both giving out different types of energy, but they are still pretty similar in terms of that. The pipes in this system are going to be like our wires and the water running through those pipes is like our charge. The heat in those that in that water is just like the energy inside um, our circuit and we can show the potential difference in this because you can see that before the radiator the water will be hotter than after the radiator so there is a difference there that we could measure uh, just like we measure the difference in energy in the charge before a bulb and after a bulb. Uh, we could show resistance in this circuit um, by increasing the size of the pipes or decreasing the size of the pipes. Uh, now obviously when the pipes here are bigger it's easier for water to travel through them and when they're smaller it's more difficult for water to travel through them. What you do here is to have a go at these exit ticket questions. See if you can answer all four of them and make sure you've got those at the end of your sheet that you're going to email to me with you. So that's a picture taken of what you've written down or it's a copy of your Word document or whatever you want it to be. I need to see copy of the work that you've done. So if you can email it to me or send it to me on Microsoft Teams, that'd be absolutely fantastic and we can go through the answers to them. Uh, stay well, stay safe uh, and hopefully I'll get to see you soon.